So I just saw Chaos walking and it was bad. Who could have seen this coming? For those of you who don't know, this movie has been kind of a meme for me for the past while now. I first found out about it because my favorite screenwriter, Charlie Kaufman, was credited as writing the first draft of the script. But not only is this movie based off of a young adult novel, but the script was changed so much from the first draft that he's no longer officially credited on the film. Not that he'd want to be anyway. You know why they call something a young adult novel instead of just a novel? It's because it sucks. This book's for babies because adults wouldn't enjoy this one. This movie was supposed to come out years ago and then they realized it was really bad and needed some reshoots and then they just delayed it and then they delayed it again and then they delayed it again and then it was May 2019 and then it was January 2020 and then it was January 2021. It's always a great sign when you delay your film from January to January and this decision was made well before COVID was shutting down theaters. And then it's January 2021 and you think it's about to come out? Nope, delayed again, sorry. Anyway, it's finally out now and I watched it and wow, what a surprise, it wasn't a good movie at all. Not even these sad Twitter accounts could save this film from its negative reception. Chaos walking memes, please. This is a verified promotional account for the film and they completely gave up on posting in the middle of March. They're not even trying to promote the digital release in April because nobody gives a shit. Apparently they thought this movie would be a success just because Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley are in it. And to be fair, that's probably the reason why most people saw it. But apparently you need like a competent story? What? The plot of this movie is that there's a planet and it's not Earth and Tom Holland and a bunch of other people are on it. It's the future. It's 200 years in the future and they're settling this planet and uh, the planet, something to do with it makes it so that your thoughts are go outside your head. So if you're a male and not a female, your thoughts uh, are really loud and uh, y people can see them, but uh, it doesn't affect women. Then a space pod carrying a bunch of people and also Daisy Ridley shows up and it crash lands on the planet, or at least that's the implication because it starts crashing and then it just cuts away and then it's a, it's a burning rubble and Daisy Ridley is just completely unscratched and everybody else died. So Daisy Ridley's team is basically there to scout the planet because they've lost contact with the first wave of settlers and so they're like, let's just see how things are before we send the second wave. Which is really weird because they don't really seem to think there's anything wrong as they're going down in this pod or whatever. Like they're all acting pretty casually and nonchalant before the pod starts crashing for no reason. You'd think you could send like a drone or a robot or anything other than just 10 people people who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like they're just showing up even though they have zero clue what the first wave is doing or if they're alive really. Meanwhile, Tom Holland is dicking around doing nothing and they throw a bunch of exposition at us and he's like, I've never seen a girl in my entire life. And this is because there was an alien race on this planet that we were trying to colonize and they're called the Spackle. I'm not kidding. And the Spackle killed all the women. And this was before I was old enough to form any real memories, so, um, yep. Anyway, Tom Holland's walking around by himself, and oh my goodness, somebody's trying to steal supplies from the barn. Who the fuck is that? Let me chase after them. Oh shit, they ran away. Hey, what the hell is this? There's the fire is still smoldering, and this is a space pod, and there's graves here? Graves. People are dead, buried, death. I gotta go tell them they have to. So the space pod crashed very recently. Daisy Ridley has had enough time to bury all of her friends. She is completely unharmed and just running around doing all this athletic bullshit. And now we find out that the crash ship is a short walk from their town and nobody heard this. All right. So now Tom Holland needs to go back and tell the mayor about what he saw, but he's uh, accidentally telling everybody else on the way back because his thoughts are too noisy. You can't control your thoughts. Sorry. I don't know how he was doing it, but he didn't have any noise. Find her! So from this information, Mods Mickelson decides that it must be a girl. Because if it were a man, then you'd see the thoughts, so it has to be a girl. But Tom Holland saw this person for not even 10 seconds. But throughout the film, you show many male characters that don't constantly have thoughts screaming from their head. And for longer amounts of time than Tom Holland saw Daisy Ridley. This wouldn't really be any kind of anomaly that he'd have to mention, but the script needs to go somewhere, I guess. So they gotta be like, oh, it's a girl. We gotta find the girl. So Tom Holland 
Gwen manages to find her and he's like, ooh, a girl, you're pretty. You're very pretty. I like you. You're a girl. And he's like, oops, stop it, silly brain. That's my thoughts. I'm sorry. And Tom Holland tries to keep her a secret all to himself, but his stupid brain lets the other people know that he found her. And then one of the guys that's supposed to be making sure she doesn't escape decides to play with one of her space gadgets and then it explodes and then she escapes and then she's under the floorboards and she's just there conveniently listening because mods and another person decide to start talking about their evil plan. And it is very, very difficult to understand what his plan even is. I'm done living in exile. If we take her ship, we can take control of the planet. They'll be in hypersleep when they land, so they won't expect an ambush. So there's a ship coming for Daisy Ridley that has like 4,000 people on it, and he wants to steal their ship so that he can take over the planet. And because Mods is so confident that they'll be in hypersleep when they land, he'll be able to ambush them without them expecting it. So now Daisy Ridley has to escape so she can find a way to contact her ship, which is the largest in her fleet, because if she doesn't do that, then they will all be in hypersleep when they land and get ambushed. Like, Mods will just show up outside the ship and say open sesame and the doors will open and he'll point guns at people while they're still sleeping or something. I don't know. The ship is mine. Now I can take over the whole planet. Okay. So Daisy Ridley was in a team that was scouting the planet for this ship specifically because they were unable to contact the first wave of colonizers. Her pod crashed. Her entire team is dead. She's the only one left and has no way to contact them. And this 4,000 passenger second wave colonizer ship is just going to land on the planet like nothing happened. Like, we can't contact anybody from the first wave, so we're gonna send out a scouting group, and oh, it turns out we can't contact them. We don't know what's happening to them. Let's just land anyway while all of us are in hypersleep, apparently. No fucking wonder nobody who saw this movie understood what the villains were trying to do the entire time. None of it makes any fucking sense. Whatever, this is the plot of the movie, I guess. So Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley escape with each other in this epic chase scene with, like, motorcycle and horses and stuff and they fall and Tom Holland's best friend little dog Manchi shows up because he was really fast and just happened to follow them. Then they get hungry and Tom Holland just takes off his shirt and goes into the water and starts punching a sea monster. I guess he used a knife but I thought he was punching him at first. It was pretty funny. And then it just cuts away to them eating the sea monster stuff. You had the opportunity to do something a little interesting and you kind of just skipped over it. Okay. As the two characters bond with each other we learn that Daisy Ridley has spent her entire life growing up on a spaceship. And despite this, she's been doing pretty fucking well for herself this movie. She's running around and riding motorbikes and doing grave digging speed runs. Lonely, like me. Hilarious. Later, they run into one of the spackle, and Tom Holland's like, oh no, this is the thing that killed all the women. We should hide. But his noise is so noisy that it finds him and drags him away and is about to kill him or something. And so Tom Holland fights back and tries to kill the spackle. And then Daisy Ridley shows up and is like, excuse me, are you trying to kill that thing? Is that like, uh, is that just who you are? You're a person that kills things? Ah, no! So Tom Holland lets it go, and then Daisy Ridley just continues to scold him over this. It's your solution to everything to just kill it. Where was that concern when Tom Holland was stabbing the sea monster? You were perfectly fine eating him, and you didn't say a word then. And that creature wasn't dragging him away, potentially trying to kill him. It was just minding its own business, and you didn't give a shit. This creature stands on two legs and wears a loincloth. You shouldn't kill this one in particular. It's wrong if you kill this one. God, you're such an asshole. If he wants to drag you away, you should just let him do it. What the fuck? So anyway, they make it to Far Branch, which is where one of Tom Holland's two dads told him to go. And they don't like people from Prentice Town, which is where they're from. So they're not supposed to tell them they're from Prentice Town. But then Daisy Ridley tells them they're from Prentice Town. So it just cuts to Tom Holland outside the mayor's house with his wrists restrained and nothing else. It's confusing. Then some of the Far Branch dudes are like, yo, you're from Prentice Town, we're gonna beat you up. And Tom Holland's like, I'm gonna beat you up even though my wrists are tied. But then the mayor comes out of the house and she's like, why are you doing that? Here, let me untie your wrists even though I tied you up beforehand. Just look how awful it looks when she cuts through the rope. Like, yeah, your hands were not tied at all. You just twisted your wrists and you're fine. Okay. So now Tom Holland and the mayor are friends and he discovers that this whole town is Amish. We're church settlers trying to live a simple life so we let that machinery go to ruin and, and gone with the business of surviving. I'm not sure that 
those two things are at odds with each other, but okay. Pretty sure these machines got invented to help with our survival. Why are you using a refrigerator? That's technology. Get the fuck out of here. It is during this scene that Daisy Ridley says that she has to contact the ship, otherwise she won't get picked up and she will be stranded here forever. System entry will be any day. If I don't contact them soon, they might move on to the next system and I'll be stranded. So if the ship isn't coming, then what exactly is Maud's plan? He said that they can't let her warn the ship so that they can ambush the ship and take it over and rule the fucking planet. So they want her to contact the ship, but they just don't want her to say bad things about them. But she might not have had any bad things to say about you if you didn't capture her against her will. If you wanted to ambush the ship without her warning them about things, why didn't you you just help her contact the ship from the beginning. Apparently the ship's not gonna come unless she contacts them. What the fuck was your plan? Meanwhile, Mods and the other crazy people are still trying to hunt them down. The Preacher character is just so insanely over the top, it's pretty hilarious. All around revealed to us. Wickedness brings sickness. All around. As I hear your truth, I know your truth. The noise demands a martyr! Why are you going, preacher? The angel waits! Now Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley are forced to tr get to know each other so that the script can pretend that they like each other. You don't know about your mother. She died when I was a baby, so... So? You can still know what she's like. Dead. She's dead. She's dead. That's what she's like. I lost my parents too. You don't see me yelling about it. Whoa! He's just thinking in his fucking head! Did you not get the memo? Yeah, my parents died too. You don't see me thinking about it ever. What the fuck? So Tom Holland finds his mother's diary in his bag because one of his two dads snuck it inside there before he left. They read the first entry and it's like, what a beautiful baby boy. I love having a beautiful baby boy who is Tom Holland. He's my baby. And the second entry of the diary is like, war is coming. They will find us. They are trying to kill us all. The preacher man says that women don't have noise because they don't have souls. So now they are killing all women and that includes me. I guess I'm going to die now. <laughs> So the story about the spackle showing up and killing all the women was just a lie. And instead, this crazy religious nut managed to persuade everyone in the town to just kill all the women because they're bad and you can't hear them thinking. And this lie was just for Tom Holland and nobody else. The entire fucking town was in on this. Literally everybody except Tom Holland knew about this. And they created this lie exclusively for him because, um... Uh, call me crazy, but isn't it a little bit conflicting when the plot twist of your film revolves around an entire town keeping a secret from the main character in a universe where everyone's thoughts can be loudly heard and seen? The film clearly established that most people are not very good at hiding their thoughts at all, and Mods Mickelson's character seems to be the only person that has this shit under control. How exactly did this entire town raise him and not once think like, oh, Oh, we killed that dude's mom. <laughs> it was only, hmm, I don't know, the most significant event that took place in this town during the entire time you were colonizing this stupid planet. The time where everybody decided that they would murder all the women is not on any of their minds ever. The only reason the spackle existed on this planet was in service of this twist. The only reason why women's thoughts can't be heard was in service of this twist. How did you build this entire story around this twist without realizing that they they massively contradict each other. It doesn't work. Anyway, so now the crazy people have caught up and they're mad and they want Tom Holland and Daisy Ridley. And the people in Farquad Branch have a bunch of guns and some of them are really old looking and some of them are space guns. There's such a ridiculous mishmash of tones and styles in this film. Like so much of the story is clearly just for the sake of having this Western aesthetic. All right, so we've got a plan to colonize this planet. Who should we send down in phase one? Forget about about doctors and scientists, let's just populate the planet with a bunch of farmers and a crazy religious nut. Okay. So Tom Holland goes to find Daisy Ridley and it looks like she just kicked somebody's ass off screen, I guess. Apparently being raised in a ship your entire life is akin to having Navy SEAL training or some shit. She's too powerful. The two main characters hide inside this place, but the bad guys know they're there, so Mods tells one of Tom Holland's two dads that he should try and get his son out because he knows he'll listen to him. And it is during this scene where he attempts to rationalize why everyone in his town was lying to him and only him for his entire life. We try 
but it was chaos. The best we could do was keep you safe. We thought we could protect you. That's not protecting me, that's lying. I'm me. sorry. Let me protect you now. What? Now I understand if you and his other dad didn't exactly feel comfortable bringing up that conversation, but this lie involved the entire town. Like even Nick Jonas's character who's been bullying Tom Holland every scene they've been in is also protecting Tom Holland from the truth about the town. He's been bullying him their entire lives and not once has he ever thought, haha, my dad killed your mom. <laughs> like everybody in the town still believes the shit that led them to commit this atrocity, right? Why would they help Tom Holland not know about it his entire life? Did they all regret it the day after they killed all the women being like, I guess that was kind of dumb, wasn't it? None of this makes any sense and it's all just forced into the script so they can have a stupid twist. Why are there even science fiction elements in this film? Would it not alleviate a lot of the issues with this twist? Like, cool, we're on a planet that's not Earth. There are some aliens somewhere else and people's thoughts can be heard. But you're not doing anything with any of those concepts. We never see the spackle again. That was it, that one tiny fight scene. The only other alien life we see is the tiny bit with the sea monster and some bug at the beginning of the movie that he stabs with a knife when he's like, I love my knife. Why didn't you just write a story about a secluded village on Earth that killed all women? Why does it need to be in the future and on another planet and people's thoughts can be heard? Not a single element of this story feels justified in any way. It's very annoying. Anyway, Daisy Ridley steps outside to surrender and oh my gosh, it was just a trick and the gay dad was really good at throwing his thoughts places. So the real Daisy Ridley escapes from Tom Holland and it doesn't look like she's in much of a hurry at all. So they find a boat and start paddling away and the preacher just chases after them on his horse like he's the fucking Terminator. He just goes down the waterfall and his horse drowns, I guess, and he just starts swimming after them. And despite the main characters having a boat and two paddles, he catches up with them? Holy crap, they suck so bad. This is a very funny scene. So the boat flips over and during the commotion, he manages to steal Manchi the dog. And I guess he finds the perfect spot in the river where he can just stand up without swimming. And he drowns the dog in front of them while they are watching helplessly. Oh no, the river is too powerful. I can't swim back. Maybe if Tom Holland just stood up, he could walk back or something. And then it just cuts to the next scene. Like, dude, you could still go after them. You caught up to them before really quickly while they were paddling away. You could probably do the same thing while they're hanging on to their capsized boat. But nope, the movie just moves on and you're not supposed to think about anything. What exactly were you trying to do anyway? There were points where it seemed like you were definitely trying to drown Daisy Ridley, but if you did that, then the ship would never come and your friends couldn't steal it. Were you trying to capture her alive? Like you would just throw her over your shoulder and start swimming back? Was your entire plan just to kill the dog? What were you doing? Do these characters want her dead or not? How are they gonna steal the ship if they kill her and it never comes? You don't think perhaps that maybe your film would be more watchable if anybody understood the motivations of the villains? You know, the characters that are driving the entire conflict of the story? So they make it to the remnants of the first wave colonizer ship because they're gonna use this ship to try and contact the other ship. But unfortunately, oh no, the antenna is disconnected. So Tom Holland climbs around and yep, it's literally an antenna and he just fucking plugs it in. Like it was perfectly undamaged and functional, but somebody unplugged it, I guess. Meanwhile, the preacher man shows up and tries to murder Daisy Ridley and she takes a little gadget out from her pocket and throws it at him and then he's on fire. I guess the rivers on this planet have alcohol and not water because boy, was he ever flammable. Yo, Daisy Ridley, what happened to not killing things. I thought you were so high and mighty for not killing. What happened to that? Anyway, Mod shows up and kills one of Tom Holland's two dads and there's a very sad scene. He's dying in his arms like a movie. And then they have a fight scene and it's kind of funny because Mods just tricks him a bunch and there's like a bunch of different versions of Mods and Tom Holland's too stupid to realize that he's going after the wrong one. It's kind of funny. And it looks like Tom Holland's done for, but at the last moment he becomes an expert thought thrower and imagines his mother and is like,
like, you're, you kill women, you're a coward, you stupid. And then he imagines all of the other women in the town that he helped kill. How he's perfectly imagining them without ever having seen them in his entire life, I don't know. They seem to be pretty fucking uncanny for Mods' character because he fell for the trick. Could you imagine Tom Holland doing this and trying to make Mods feel guilty about the murders, but Mods is just like, I don't know any of these people. Who are, who are they? Whatever, they're just gonna bully him off the cliff, I guess. Actually, never mind. Daisy Ridley just shows up out of fucking nowhere and pushes him off because she really wanted that kill. All right, so now you've murdered two people in this film. Is that just your first reaction to something? Is it to kill it? Likeable main characters, everybody. And then Tom Holland's shirtless again, and then the movie's over. Yay. What a colossal failure. It's crazy to imagine that some years ago, there was a different cut of this film that Lionsgate deemed unreleasable. Honestly, I would love to see what this movie was like before the reshoots. Yo, Lionsgate, you spent a hundred million dollars on this crappy movie that nobody watched and nobody liked. Just release the original cut. What do you have to lose? Hashtag release the chaotic cut. Do it, you cowards. There's a market out there for people like me who want to see absolute train wrecks. Just fucking do it. I don't care if the effects aren't finished. That would be even funnier. Just do it. Anyway, this movie was nonsense. Nothing about it was justified. The main characters were annoying. The villains were underexplored. The motivations were incomprehensible. There was no reason for this to be science fiction or on another planet or 200 years in the future or in a world where everybody's thoughts can be seen and heard. It was bad and wrong. It was badong. Wee And I'm giving this one a 2 out of 10. Well, that's a wet little girl. Oh, I should, I, can I, can oh, I go, I uh, can I go back in time and, and not say that? <laughs> God, I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs>